All right. Well, welcome, everybody. My name is Stephanie Dolph. I'm a passionate sewist and uh, a librarian. I Some of you may know me from working. I used to work at the Hastings Branch Library. Um, I'm now uh, moved on to a new library, um, but I'm really happy to be back teaching this class. Um, and we're going to be doing Sachiko. So let me just unpin myself here so you'll just see my desk space, hopefully. So first, let's talk a little bit about the history of Sachiko. So it's a traditional Japanese embroidery style. It dates back to the Edo period, which is from 1615 to 1868. And it was originally used to reinforce and mend clothing. So geometrically patterned stitches were sewn into a garment, often with layers of other reinforcing fabric or patches. And that created a really long lasting garment. So this was done basically out of necessity by the working class as creating new cloth was really labor intensive and really expensive. So historically, the working class in Japan was forbidden from um, wearing bright colors, but you'll see a lot of indigo dyed cloth, which is basically a dark blue like this. So sashiko literally means little stabs, which is a reference to the way the fabric is stitched with a running stitch. And in modern times, sashiko has gained in popularity beyond Japan. I've seen it all over the place lately, um, embellishing clothing and bags um, to quilting and mending clothing. Um, there's been a real resurgence, I think, in, in people doing visible mending and decorative mending, especially for like uh, jeans and um, denim jackets, that sort of thing. The first thing we need to do before we can get started with this is create a grid. And the nice thing about these grids is that you can add this to really any size or shape that you want. So I've got a four by four grid. You could, you could take this, you could blow it up. You could make it smaller by making the grids a different size, or you could, you could just add more grids, just add this as a pattern onto a garment. So it's really versatile. So go ahead and grab your ruler and we're going to start by just um, adding our squares to our fabric. So we're gonna do three squares today. And this is a, what I've got here is a fat quarter that I cut in half here. But if you just have small scraps that you're working with, you can, you can just trace those on anywhere. If you want to turn these into a coaster, make sure you leave about two inches in between each square. So, to make my life a little easier, I'm just going to draw all four boxes right now, or three boxes, excuse me. For the first grid, we're gonna, it's this design here. So it's a four by four grid to start with. So I'm gonna make a mark along each side, one, uh, every one inch. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do diagonal, basically going through each square. Okay. And again, you can tie a little knot if you wanna um, secure your stitches with a knot. I'll show you another way as well right now. If you are making 
maybe a garment or something where you're going to see the back side. It's good to, I think it's good to use the back stitch method versus doing a knot because the knot doesn't, it's bumpy and it doesn't feel so good against your skin. So, but for something decorative, I think it's, you're totally fine to just do, um, just to tie a knot. Um, but for the sake of just learning, I'm going to show you guys how to do the back stitch. So I'm going to start by stitching the square around the edge first. Um, and that should kind of help everything. Um, cause as you, as you work with it, you can kind of get pulled out of shape. So it's good to start with just that border piece anyway. Um, now normally if I was doing a knot, I would just start at this corner in the right corner and just kind of stitch across. Um, when you back stitch, you want to start past the point, um, where you would normally start. And then we're going to stitch back towards the beginning and then back in the right direction again. So I'm going to start right here. I have to be careful not to pull my thread all the way through. So I've got a little tail here. I got to leave a little tail. And I'm going to turn this actually because it's just more comfortable to stitch that way for me. Um, okay, so each of my stitches, I want them, I want to do about four stitches per inch. So per grid, I'm trying to get in about four stitches. Um, you could do whatever amount you want. Just try to do, just try to keep it even. So if you're going to do three stitches per inch, that's fine. Um, just try to keep, keep that consistent. So I'm going to go down. Let's see. Okay. So I'm stitching back towards back towards the corner there. And I don't want to pull, oops, I don't want to pull my thread all the way through again. So I'm just going to leave a little tail. That's good. Just like an inch is fine. Just be careful not to pull that out. Now I'm going to go stitch back in the other direction. So I'm looking at the back side here. And this is the stitch, the last stitch I stitched right here where this gap is, because I'm looking at the back side. sorry. This is, this is the last stitch I stitched where it's a gap because um, I'm looking at the back side. So I'm gonna skip this one and I'm gonna stitch back down here. So I'm skipping my first stitch and coming up, you can see it better from the front. I'm coming up right where the last stitch ended there. Okay. And I'm going to stitch right over these last few stitches that I did. So that should keep it really secure without a knot. Probably though, for the rest of class, I'll just use a knot. It is a little faster. And as I said, you don't really need to, I don't need to worry so much about a, a knot on something like a coaster. That's not going to bug me. If this was a blouse or something like that, um, then I would want to go for something like this for the back stitch. Okay. The other thing that I want to consider as I'm stitching is um, where I have cross sections. So where my grids, grid lines meet, I want to try to uh, not stitch right into those corners if I can. Um, you want to leave a little gap there.
because we have a lot of lines that are intersecting at that point. And it'll be a lot neater if you leave a little gap there and don't stitch right over any of those crossing lines as much as you can help it. If it happens, it happens. Okay, so I'm gonna keep stitching now across here. When I get to this corner, I wanna make sure it's nice and smooth before I go and turn and go around the corner here. So often you'll want to leave a little bit of slack at a corner on the back side. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so I've already pulled this tight, so I can just come back in with my needle and just pull out a little loop. If you since I already pulled it tight. So I just like to leave like really just a small amount there, just a little bit of slack in the corner to keep it from, to keep it from getting too tight around the corners. That's where it can get really tight. That's, I mean, if you find that that's not necessary for the fabric you're working with, then you don't need to do it. Now that we've done the outline, um, I'm gonna go back in and do all my horizontals, then all my verticals, then all my diagonals in one direction, then all my diagonals in the other direction. So I'll start with a horizontal. So now I've got my grid and I'm gonna start stitching my, um, my diagonal pieces. And I'll just kind of weave across doing each diagonal. Oh, and I should say when I do diagonals, it's a little bit longer than, than this, uh, these sides here. So here I was doing four stitches. So you might want to do five or six stitches on the diagonals per inch. Um, well, it's not an inch, it's but per grid. Okay, so now I'm going to start... Last time I went that way, so this time I'm going this way. Okay, I'm almost done with this one. I promise the next two designs will just like fly right by compared to this one. So I'm just gonna tie off my knot here.
Okay, so I'm going to mark, again, just like one per inch. So one, two, three. We're going to set it up just the same. Okay, so there's my grid. You can kind of see the little star pattern here. So we're gonna need some diagonal shapes as well. So I'm, so I'm just gonna copy, but the star is gonna go in the corner here. Then we're gonna go down from here to this point here. And then back up from that point. Okay. Then we've got this corner here. And then another diagonal here. So I'm just following along with my pattern here. And that's the border of my star. And next I'm gonna do some diagonal lines. So from these bottom points, the inner points of the star, diagonal across. That'll go right through the center of my star. I'll go the other way now, this way. There we go. And then last we've got a vertical point and then a horizontal one. So it's sort of like an asterisk in the center here. And I'm gonna start again by stitching a box all the way around my star here. Okay. So now that I have my border, I'm gonna stitch around the outside of my star. So I'll start this bottom corner, this point. And again, I'm just gonna try to maintain the same stitch length. So with the star though, we have, we have diagonal lines and we have some um, vertical and horizontal lines like here and here. So when I'm doing a diagonal line, I'm gonna do six stitches per grid and when I'm doing a vertical or horizontal, I'll do just four because that's what I was doing over here and that worked out for me, so. Okay, so I had two, or sorry, two diagonal lines and now I've got a vertical line, so. This will be four per grid. Okay, here's the last section of the outer part of the star. And then I'm going to go into the center. Here we go. Ended right there. I think I'm going to just jog back to this part here. And I'm going to stitch from this point, sorry, this point here, diagonally all the way across. Then I'll jog down to here and stitch this way. Um, then I'll jog over here, stitch across there, and then once more, jog over here and stitch up.
So I'll just lay this here on my square and I'll just mark where those grid lines are. That's just way faster if you don't have the centimeter ruler. Okay, so in this picture here, actually, I think it goes like that. We get it, we're gonna do all the blue horizontal stitches first. So each stitch is the length of one grid. So I'll tie a little knot and we'll get started here. Okay, so I'm gonna start by coming up the, let's see, yeah, I wanna start up here. Could start at the bottom actually, that might be, yeah, that might be easier. Let's start right here at the bottom right corner here. So I'm gonna come up right there. So I'm all the way on the right, one, one grid up, and I'm gonna just stitch over and down one grid length. We're gonna come up one grid length later. So we're skipping basically every grid, every other grid, and then stitching the next. So this should go pretty quickly because they're each stitch is so long. Might wanna do like four or five grid lengths and then pull it through. Actually, I have a blouse planned where I'm gonna do this whole pattern along the yoke. I think it'll be really cute. Okay. So when I get to the end there, I'm just gonna go down here and we'll come up on the next row. I'll show you what that looks like. So the next row is gonna look like just like this, but staggered over. So I'm gonna come up right here. There we go. And then I'll stitch across here, but first I'll turn. So I'm working in the right direction for me. Okay, so I'll start here and I'll stitch just in the same way all the way across. But you'll see this time it's staggered. So where there's a gap in the row here, the next row will have a stitch. We'll just keep going like that until we've done all the, all the horizontals and then I'll show you what it looks like to do the vertical ones. Okay, so once you have all your, all your horizontal stitches in, you just wanna come back in and wherever you left off, if you still have thread, um, I'm gonna start in this corner and I'm gonna do all my vertical cross stitches now. And there isn't really a grid mark that I'm using for these, it's sort of, you, you eyeball it but I'm coming in at about half, like basically the center of this little grid. And I'm gonna stitch over this stitch here and I'm gonna stitch to the center of the next grid, basically. So it'll look like...
Okay. And then I'm going to just continue doing that all the way across this row. So just making little cross marks over the stitches that I've already done. So let's talk about how you're going to go about finishing up your piece. So for this one, I'm going to turn it into a coaster or into three coasters. And before I do that, you just want to um, go in and um, if you have any, any chalk, rub it off. Um, you can hand wash it um, to get rid of it. And then if you iron it, iron it from the back side or use a press cloth to protect your stitches. This is a different option for finishing your piece. All I did with this one um, was I, I found some poster board. You could use um, some thin cardboard like from a cereal box and I cut it out to be the size that I wanted to fit inside of my float frame. And then I just folded over and ironed the edges of my fabric in place and then I uh, just glued it in place with some just regular old glue, a glue stick, and put it in my float frame. So that's another option if you don't want to make a coaster. You could hang you could hang this up as wall art. And another way of hanging it up would be to hem the sides, all uh, four sides of this, and um, you could just hang it by a dowel um, on one of the short ends. I think that would also look really nice. So there's a lot of different options for how you can display this. Let me show you how I go about making a coaster now. Okay, so this line that I've drawn here is a half inch. That's what the finished coaster size will be. We're also going to need to add seam allowance. Yeah, so I'm going to add a quarter inch seam allowance all around this. So we'll do three quarters of an inch is what we'll be adding. There we go. I'm going to cut that out. Okay, so now we're going to need to get some sort of backing fabric for this. And I'm just going to use some plain cotton. And I'm just going to cut out something that's the same size. So I'll just lay my fabric on top of this one here. So I'll cut out a backing piece. And then the last piece you might want to add is a bit of fleece um, or felt, some sort of interfacing to give your coaster a little bit more body. So that should fit nicely. And this is fusible fleece. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to get fusible. I'm just gonna go ahead and fuse this to my, pre-fuse this to the back of the, my backing fabric. If you don't have fusible fleece, you'll just stitch it in place um, and you don't need to worry about fusing it. Okay, so I went ahead and just fused 
my fleece to the back side of my backing fabric and we're going to make a little sandwich here so this is the right side facing up of my embroidery piece and then you'll take the right side of your backing piece so we'll place them right sides together and then whatever you're using as um, interfacing will go on top of the stack like this um, and then if you would like you can use a few pins it's a pretty small piece so I'll just do probably four pins around the corners here Okay, so that's what our little stack should look like. You should see your interfacing on one side and the wrong side of your embroidery on the other side. And we're going to stitch this all the way around at a quarter of an inch. And I'm noticing that this um, edge doesn't line up. So I know that this line that I drew um, was with the ruler. So I'm going to trim everything else to match the embroidery piece. Okay, and once it's nice and even, we'll stitch it in place. There we go. So when we stitch this together, you want to leave a, probably about a two inch gap along one side. And I'll start stitching here, stitch all the way around, all the way around, stopping here. Um, and I'm going to use this gap here to turn the whole thing right side out. So first, let me get my sewing machine set up. If you're gonna stitch this by hand, that's totally fine. Um, you just probably wanna use, instead of your embroidery thread, you wanna get just a regular old um, dual purpose sewing thread um, that matches the color of your fabric. That way you won't see it. Um, if, you, if your stitches are visible from the outside, they'll blend right in. So sometimes when I'm trying to remember to leave that gap unstitched, I will just mark it right on my fabric right there so I remember not to stitch all the way around. And I'll start right there at that second mark I made. I'm going to be using a small qu uh, quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to stitch forward towards corner a few stitches then back stitch a few stitches then we're going to keep going that's to secure our stitches when you get to be about a quarter inch away from the corner from this edge you're gonna with your needle in the down position you're gonna lift up your presser foot we're gonna turn the we're going to turn this, put the presser foot back down, and keep stitching. And you may find that because of this angle and the thickness that it can be helpful to take a bit of wadded up fabric, place it right behind where you're about to start stitching. That'll just level out your foot. Okay, pivot one last time, and then I'm about to stop at my first chalk mark. So I'll just do a few back stitches, cut my thread, and there we go. And you'll see where um, I have a lot of bulk here at the corners. That's where I'm going to trim my corners. Now I'm just going to pull this right side out, just being gentle with it because of the embroidery. Okay, and then I have this little tool to poke out the corners. You can also use a knitting needle or um, anything with a sort of blunt point to it will work. 
we just want to poke out those corners as much as we can. There we go. Okay, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and give it a press. And when I press it, I'm going to be careful to make sure these seam allowances that are not stitched, I'm gonna make sure those are pressed nicely to the inside like that. Okay, it's been nicely ironed, so I'm gonna stitch, edge stitch all the way around the outside of this coaster. And I actually prefer to stitch on the back side um, because that's the side that has interfacing, so it'll be a little bit more stable. So here's what the coaster looks like once it's stitched up. So yeah, you can do whatever you want with these. Um, you can make them into coasters, like I said, you can hang them up, add the stitching to a pillow or a garment. Really, you can do anything you want with Sashiko. So I hope you take this and find a creative use for it. Happy sewing. <laughs>